Ah, Clive. I was just about to send for you. I'd like you to take something to Sir Wade up in Eastpool. Seeds for planting. Thought it was about time they started growing their own food. I'll keep providing them with whatever they need in the meantime, of course. But if Eastpool's going to survive, it's got to be able to fend for itself. As of those poor bearers. They've lived their whole lives in servitude, but now they're their own masters. Small wonder they ain't got the foggiest how to provide for themselves. So it's up to us to teach them. And if you're wondering why you, well, the Wagoneers taking supplies up that way have been coming back with more and more reports of Akashic around the village of late. Sir Wade's putting a brave face on it, but I think even he's starting to worry. And if he's likely to share those concerns with anyone, it's you. All right. Thanks. Wouldn't ask if I didn't have to. There. That should be enough to keep them in Gizal Greens for a few years at least. Gizal Greens? Not the most mouth-watering crop, I'll admit. But they're hardy, they grow fast, and they fill a hole. Better that than something that'll wither away at first frost. And chocobos love them too, which is no small thing. When I say all of us need to pull together to get East Pool back on its feet, I mean all of us. They ain't exactly succulent, but cook them right and they're just about bearable. I'll take your word for it. Anyway, Sir Wade'll know what to do with them. And if he don't, well, I'll go up there and show him myself. I'm sure you will. Lord Rossfield, what brings you to Eastpool? A delivery from Martha. These are Gizal green seeds. Martha's keen to cut the apron strings, then, is she? I jest, of course. You see, I had thought we might be able to revive the old wheat fields, but they'd long since gone to seed. Only, without the seeds. Martha was hoping you might be able to show the bearers how to plant and tend these, so that they'll be able to fend for themselves. That's not a bad idea. These bearers had only recently escaped their bonds before we brought them here. They know little of freedom, of providing for themselves and their loved ones. Unless we teach them how to live like free men, I fear that all we have achieved in bringing them here is to exchange one master for another. Not that myself and the Guardians have been the best example to them so far, subsisting almost entirely on Martha's charity as we do. It's about time we all started to provide for ourselves, bearers and Guardians alike. Unfortunately, we've been a little too busy of late to focus on much besides bolstering our defenses. There have been alarming reports of the Horde is closing in. They're coming, so wait, all of them. Damn it all. I thought we'd have more time. Gather the men in the square. Send to the rest for reinforcements. Yes, Sir Wade. The Horde. Akashic, a veritable legion of them. They've been seen prowling around the northern reaches for a while now. We don't have the numbers to hold back a swarm that size. I had hoped to build a perimeter wall so that myself and the Guardians might be able to defend the village, but... Now you're out of time. Precisely. If reinforcements from the rest arrive before they do, we may just scrape through, but I fear that's rather an enormous if. What if you could call on reinforcements from Eastpool? You mean the bearers? We brought them here so they might live, not die, fighting for their lives. So wait. You said you lack men to defend the village. Are the bearers not men? Do they not wish to see Eastpool saved? 
Though they may not be trained soldiers like your guardians, what help they are able to offer could still prove the difference between victory and defeat. You're right, my lord. I will appeal to them. My friends, I humbly beg your aid. We Guardians are few and our enemies many. But I swear we can defeat them with you at our side. You would send us to the slaughter to serve as bait for those fiends so that you and your men might be spared. And to think we trusted you. Say what you will. A home is not worth dying for. But it is worth fighting for. Sir Wade fights to give you lot a chance. Just like I do. Just like Sid does. We all wanted to give you a home where you could be free. And you got one, didn't you? This place, East Pool. This is your village. Your home! And if you don't fight to protect what's yours, you'll lose it! You know I'm right. This world wants to take everything from you. Everything. Your homes, your freedom, your very lives. So then, are you going to stand by and let that happen to you? Are you going to accept fate like good little Bran did and die, having never stood up for yourselves? Or will you fight like free men and women? Give me a sword. I never dreamt I'd have a home of my own. And now that I have, I don't want to lose it. I will protect what's mine, or die trying. We all will. Free men and women, fighting together. For Eastpool! Thank you, Martha. Don't mention it. Just promise me one thing that you'll show them how freeborn fight. <laughs> Gladly. Well, if it was numbers you were lacking, you certainly won't be now. Thanks to you. Me? Oh, I just love the sound of my own voice. Lord Rossfield, my lady, we're ready. So what's the plan of action? We'll divide our forces into several small detachments, each made up of guardians, bearers, and guards from the rest. These will position themselves at strategic points around the village. Upon engaging with the Akashic, each detachment will keep the creatures occupied as best they can, steadily retreating all the while. You're going to lure them into the village? I am. We will have neither the time nor the resources to treat the wounded, so injuries must be avoided at all costs. Instead, we will focus purely on defense at first. By coordinating our withdrawal through the use of messengers drawn from among the bearers, we will aim to have the swarm converge at a point of our choosing. With luck, that point will be the village square. The perfect place for our most able warriors to surround them and fall upon them. And for you and I to finish them off. A sound plan. 
but one that'll require a leader with a cool head and strong nerves to coordinate the retreat. I'd say you have both in abundance to wait, but you'll be needed. Please, leave the last of the fighting to me. Ha! And let you have all the glory. Sir, wait! They're here! Then you know what you must do. We work together. Everyone playing their part. Each shielding the other that no man might fall. That Eastpool might live on. For Rosaria! For Rosaria! We've no time to argue, my lord. I'll do as you ask. And I will do as you ask. Suppose we'd better do our bit too, then, eh? Right you are, Martha. Looks like that's the last of them. Lord Rossfield, change of plan. What is it? Owl from the rest. An Akashic curl's been sighted on Rhiannon's ride and is headed in their direction. Well, the better half of her guard is here. So wait, how many Akashic remain in East Pool? Hard to say. My men are still facing some resistance, but I think the worst is behind us. I could order a detachment or two to fall back and... No. Let them finish the job. You stay here too, Sir Wade. Your men need you. I'll go after the Curl. Join me only when East Pool is won. If you're sure, my lord. May the Founder protect you.
next one's mine. I might be. to his pool. Lord Rossfield, the curl, is it? It's dead. Thank the founder for that. And for you, my lord. We were able to eradicate the rest of the Horde. I have guardians posted around the village to keep watch for further attacks, but all seems quiet for now. I hesitate to say it, but... I think it might be over. I think it might. We did it. We saved Eastpool. Thank you, my friends. Thank you. No, Sir Wade. It's us who should be thanking you. You brought us together. Showed us what it means to fight for what you hold dear. We never had nothing to call our own before. <laughs> we didn't know what it meant to protect it. But now we do. We really do. Forgive us, Sir Wade. You and your people saved us. And still we doubted you. But there's no doubt in my mind anymore. We're free men now. So we have to start acting like it. We have to fight to protect what's ours. To protect Eastpool. And we shall. We all shall. Together. This is our home. And if anyone or anything tries to take it away... They'll have us to answer to. Come on then. Let's get to work. This village isn't going to rebuild itself. They're not slaves anymore. No. They're Rosarians. Your father took pity on the bearer's plight. And I believe if he were still with us today, this is what he would have wanted. I believe you might be right. I shall remain here, my lord, and do what I can to help rebuild the village. After all, this is my home now, too. And I could hardly call myself an East Poolian if I didn't pull my weight. I think you'll find it's East Pudlian, Sir Wade. 
But you should be proud all the same. I'll have to pull my weight too. Can't have the rest getting outclassed. Speaking of which, I ought to be getting back. Can we continue to count on your support, Martha? Of course. And I'd be counting on yours too. Us Rosarians have got to stick together, haven't we? Indeed we have. And Clive, come by the Golden Stables when you get the chance. I ain't paid you for delivering them seeds yet. All right. I will. Lord Rossfield, do you remember our very first mission together? Clearing the goblins from the Stillwind Marshes? <laughs> How could I forget? <laughs> There's one side that I shall never forget. You, facing off against that giant mauble. Not a trace of fear on your face. Since that day, there have been more than a few times when I felt like giving up. When the odds seemed so stacked in the enemy's favor, I thought I may as well just lay down my sword and surrender. But every time, I would think back to the look in your eyes that day and remember what it means to be a shield. Know that whatever trials Eastpool may face, I shall never lose courage. Thanks to you. So wait. You have always been a true shield. I know that Eastpool, and indeed all of Rosaria, will be safe in your hands. Thank you, my lord. I know the rest of the world will be safe in yours. <laughs> I'll do my best. The hero returns. It's lucky you came by when you did, eh? Not only did my seeds get delivered, but you went and saved Eastpool and all. I just did what I could. And it's only right that you get rewarded for it. Take it before I change my mind. Thank you, Martha. So, Eastpool's finally back on its feet again. And a home to free bearers. Who'd have thought we'd see the day, eh? Well, it was your idea. I know that, but I never stopped to think what it would mean. Bearers in charge of themselves, thinking for themselves, working for themselves. Like your hideaway, but not even hidden away. Though I suppose the rest ain't much different nowadays. You know... Bearers living free like that. Reminds me of when I first met Sid. Loath as I am to recall that particular day. I take it you didn't always see eye to eye. What happened? Well, if you really want to know, I started doing what I do long before I met Sid. In fact, that's how I met him. Or at least how he came to meet me. He showed up at the stables one day, asking questions about who'd been buying up bearers. Founder knows what he thought I was doing with them. Running a hunt, poking around in their innards. Something awful, anyway. Me, I thought he was a new constable. Thought the game was up. But somehow we both managed to work out what each other was about. And before I knew it, the cheeky arse was rattling on at me about how I was doing it all wrong. After all my hard work. <sighs> told me I was giving them relief, but not freedom. That my bearers were still dying as slaves. Got right under my skin, it did. Told him if he didn't like it, he could bugger off and report me to the garrison. And do you know what he did? He smiled. And then he laughed. And then I did the same. We made a pact that day that whenever one of us was in need, the other would always be there for him. And you were. Well, we both wanted the same thing. 
to make life better for bearers. Just like your dad. Do you know I was born right around the time Elwyn became Archduke? Growing up, I saw how he tried to change things. He certainly didn't lack for ambition, that one. Indeed. But the loftier one's ambitions, the harder they are to achieve. Which is why those of us who follow in their footsteps need to finish what people like Sid and my father started. Suppose you're right, aye. And if we don't manage it, there's always them who come after us. Good thing we've got a few half-decent sorts waiting in the wings, eh? It's almost enough to give you a little bit of hope. Hmm. <laughs> Just a little. Anyway, enough nattering. Better get back to work. Let's see about making everyone some dinner, shall we? The least the folks who saved Eastpool deserve is a hot meal. And you and me ain't gonna save the world on an empty stomach neither. That sounds like a wonderful idea. <laughs>